We are going to do some functional mobility stuff. I'm Maeve. <laughs> so we're going to start with a foam roller. I like to think about going from the bottom up. Actually, if you have a ball, we'll start with a ball. And I say this all the time, but if you don't have a ball, you can actually even just use your roller on your foot. It still feels really good. Um, but if you have a ball, we're going to use a ball under the foot. I'm going to like really kind of try to stay with some pacing because I get um, I get like lost in this and I feel like I could do this for a really, really long time and I have to keep myself on track so that we don't miss out on anything and we can get through the whole body. We're going to give a good emphasis on the upper body today. I woke up in the middle of the night with a migraine. I like to warn you of these things. And then this morning I had finally had to take Excedrin migraine which has caffeine in it, and I don't consume that much caffeine. So I will also try to slow down my speech. That was me trying to do that. I'm a fast talker anyway, but Lord. Okay, I'm gonna take it right to the base of my heel. So not the center of my heel, but like where the arch and the heel meet, and I'm gonna put a little pressure there. And then I'm gonna a little side to side. And if it feels good, you'll do that, and if it doesn't, you won't. And that's kind of the theme for everything. Good. And then we're going to switch feet up and down on the arch. You can kind of move around, just feel where you feel it. The nice thing here is that you have control over how much pressure you put the f onto the ball with your foot. We really kind of beat up on our feet between like impractical shoes, those haven't really been in my rotation that much as of late. But even just like sheer walking around. And we gotta give them some love. Find that arch heel connection, put a little pressure. If it feels good, go back and forth. Good, all right, moving on. How fast was that? That was so fast. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> Foam roller or a yoga block behind the calf. So I'm going to do this every single time just in case um, you are new. You can work the calf on the, on the corner, literally the corner of the yoga block. I know that the, my mat is black, the block is black, and my pants are blocked. So differentiating between those things is probably tricky right now, but it's on an angle. <laughs> or just use your foam roller. And you can also put the other leg on top to give a little more pressure. If you're doing as I'm doing, this requires some strength and some connection. Push down, lift your hips up, and you can take it forward and back. We're gonna do some nice big sweeps here. You kind of find where it feels like you need the most attention. Sometimes that's not necessarily the most tender spot. Sometimes that spot's too intense. And I don't want this to feel like you're torturing yourself or you're about to go blind. Like, like oh my God, it hurts so much, I can't even see. That is not in order. Whew, switch sides. So. As we move through this, again, I'm gonna to try to keep some tempo to it so that we get to everything that I wanna to get to. If you feel like I've taken you away from something that needs more attention, stay or go back to it. So I love using a foam roller before doing any kind of movement because it opens the body up, it prepares you, but also the effort of holding yourself up, depending upon what you're doing, it really is kind of like a little warm up because you got to use some strength. You got to really tap into your core here. Kind of find where you need some attention. Last few breaths here. Really nice. Okay, we're gonna keep moving up the leg. Hamstring is a little tricky, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little awkward, and if it doesn't work for you, you just 
figure something else out, maybe go back to your calves. So one leg is on the roller, the other leg is bent, foot on the ground. You really have to support yourself here. And then do a few sweeps. Should feel pretty light. And then maybe come to like the belly of the muscle, the mid part, and then sort of tip forward a little bit. I'm gonna hold this foot up off the ground, so I'm using a little bit of core to do that. And I'm gonna go a little side to side. And this leg is giving me some support. And this is also the position for pistol squats. So it kind of gives you a little bit of support and it works those muscles that might then lend toward pistol squats, which we're not doing today. Don't worry. Good. Ah, oh, that feels so good. Second side. We'll go up and down a few times. And then coming through. Kind of the center, but you can play with that and figure out like where you need it. I, I'm gonna keep saying that, but that's sort of a theme is where do you need it? Where you need it might not be where I need it. So you don't have to do exactly as I'm doing. You can do what you need to do. And you feel how this is that pistol squat setup? Yeah? Awesome. And then we're going to go right into the back of the hip. I should have thought out what I was wearing. I hope you can <laughs> see clearly. So I've got the roller on a little bit of an angle this way. And then crossing this ankle to knee. And again, nice support. Don't dump into the shoulder. Be awake, be alive there. And so with the knee open like this and the ankle crossed, we're kind of pulling the muscle fibers open a little bit to get in there. And then I personally like to come right up onto my sitting bone and extend this leg out. I'm actually gonna level this. So kind of like we did for the hamstring, but way up at the top because I get all sorts of attachment stuff on my hamstrings. And I'm gonna give that just a little bit of care there. I like the, the ball for that too, if you wanna go for that. And then we're gonna go right to the other side, hip. So cross the ankle. You can kind of play with that angle of the roller. So I like to typically, not always, but in the, at least in like this initial phase, I like to run with the muscle fibers. So if you can think about kind of the hips, hips run a bunch of different ways, honestly, but those big muscle fibers kind of run on a diagonal like a lateral diagonal, if that makes any sense. So I try to position the roller to kind of get in there, but you can kind of move it around as much as you need to. And then I'm gonna take it right up onto that sitting bone. It can be awkward at times, I know. And so I usually say like, you don't want to roll on bone or joint because it doesn't feel very good. And th this is the tricky one. So if I'm like right up on the sitting bone, I'm actually on that bone. But I got a little meat there, so I'm, I'm okay. Beautiful. We're gonna do quick quadriceps. If you can fit both thighs onto your roller, mine's a little small, so it's a little questionable, but I'm gonna go for it. If you have a full one, you're golden. If you need to do one thigh at a time, that's my preference when I have this size roller, but I'm just gonna do both at the same time and just get a quick little flush here. Oh, I forgot my other ball. I'm gonna grab my other ball. I should have said this sooner too. Um, you can use your small mini ball for any of this stuff too. If it's too intense with the roller, the ball is wonderful. Hi, Lydia.
perfect. Okay. So because my roller is short, I have to create a little bit more support for myself. So I am going to have my roller from my head down as much of my spine as I can, and then I'm gonna put a yoga block under my hips. I could do it the other way with a block under my head and the roller um, under my hips. I had to think about that for way too long. If you have a long one, you're golden. You're gonna, gonna go head to tailbone on the full roller. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna lay back, make sure my head is there and supported, and then I'm gonna block my hips. And I'm gonna go middle height, but low would be fine as well. And then elbows out to the side. And then I'm gonna rock a little side to side here first to just kind of like give those muscles a little massage and say, you're good, you're good, you're good, relax. And then I'm just gonna find some stillness here. And as we're here in stillness, breathing, finding your breath, allowing the fronts of the shoulders to soften. So it's very rare that I do things that are completely passive. I do want you to be passive here just for a few breaths to allow the shoulders to broaden, the elbows to get heavy. One more breath here. And then extend the left leg a little longer. Push the back of the hand down. And as you do that, the elbow is going to lift up and then feel that shoulder blade move toward the roller. And then release that. Bring the arm back in. Do the same thing on the right side. I kind of ran out of space, but stretch the right arm out. Push the back of the hand down so the elbow lifts. And then hug that shoulder blade into the roller. And elbow back down, arms in. You're gonna crisscross the arms. You're gonna, elbows go wide, kind of pull the elbows down, fingers toward the sky, reach across your body. And you'll just switch the arm that's on top each time. Woo, so your shoulder blades are kind of wrapping into the roller. Oh my goodness. I carry a lot of tension in my upper back. Especially on a migraine day. <laughs> Arms up straight, and then retraction, protraction. So pulling back, reaching up. So kind of the same action in the shoulder girdle that you just had with the arms crossing, but with a different angle. So it hits just a little differently. And then hold it kind of neutral, maybe a little squeeze and then arms up and down here. If you wanted, you could lift up your legs. Have to work your core a little bit more, especially if you're on a complete roller. I'm only on a half roller, and I've got really strong support under my hips with a block, and I still feel like I have to work to support myself here. So if you're feeling like you're gonna roll off and you're on the full roller, that is so normal. If you want, you'll make this into a dead bug. Uh, I guide my heart pretty, pretty well these days because... And I think I'm doing the wrong arm, arm, wrong leg I was, which is not the end of the world. <laughs> it's not wrong, it was just different. Seeing if you're paying attention. You probably couldn't see because you were lying on your back. <laughs> That's for the best. Couple more. Beautiful. Careful. Feet back down if they were up. If you have a block, remove it. You can roll off your roller carefully. So good, so good. Turn your roller this away. So, horizontal. Behind the shoulder blades, cross the arms, lift the hips into a bridge, and then up and down. Oh my goodness, my back is cracked. Thank you, roller.
Beautiful. And then just roll onto one side. So the, the roller is gonna be on a little bit of an angle. And we're just gonna go up toward the shoulder and kind of hang there and go forward and back. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Ah. So I need it right here. I'm gonna hang in here and move this arm around a little bit. You find your spot. Probably a vein popping out of my head right now. And then let's switch sides. <sighs> Second day. And we're gonna go up and down here a little bit. And then same thing, kind of find where you need it. You can move the arm around, kind of explore. Yeah. So good. And then come on up. Okay. So you can use your roller or I need this little guy. You can use this guy. So sometimes having it not be crazy intense is a good thing. You can test it with both. We're moving to the front side of the body and we're gonna roll here, okay? You can also use, I think last week we did a block with a ball on it so that it's stable. You could do that and you can do the ball, the big ball. So this will be like, this would be the most intense. This will be the second most intense. This will be the softest. Remember, it doesn't have to be the hardest version. It's just like everything else we do. And then, I like the little angle. You kind of have to play with it to find out what the angle needs to be for you. And then it's like the, not on the front of the shoulder, but just inside of the front of the shoulder. And then all the way into the breast as much as it feels okay. Or the pec. For for dudes, you can go as far as you want. Women, we gotta be a little gentler on our chests. And this is a tricky area. I want you to keep going. But the pec minor runs in here, so on ladies, it's really challenging to get a, a good amount of pressure here because of our breast tissue. But the pec minor is like, if you were to like take your hands and kind of pull your breast tissue down, it's in there. And it's pretty tender for most of us because it's a major stabilizer for the shoulder. And it tends to get real tight and has huge implications on our shoulder girdle. I'm gonna find a spot that feels good and I'm gonna take my arm up and down here. I'm gonna lift into a knee plank while I'm here so I get a little bit of core. And I've got my left arm, well my non-roller arm, out to the side like I'm doing a push-up. And I'm going to switch sides. So all things movement with with Maeve, with me, uh, our self-exploration. This is another form of it. Just like in our yoga practice, just like in our workouts, you are finding out what your body needs, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Okay, I found my spot. Whew, I'm gonna hang in there. I'm gonna move this arm around a little bit. I'm finding a little bit of a plank on my knees and I'm using this arm like a good stabilizer. I'm hoping that when you feel the benefit of this, you'll start to do this on your own. And maybe you don't spend quite as long, but even if it was five minutes a day, taking care of your body in this way, really, really beneficial. 
perfect. Ugh. All right, you have a yoga strap or a towel, you're gonna use it. Yoga strap or a towel, and you're gonna feel, use it to feel kind of like a little pressure for the arms. Oh, that felt good. Okay, you're gonna take the strap like so. Take the feet wide. Just take a few kind of rotations here. And then feet as wide as you feel comfortable. Come through center. And then come around. Come back up. Do that again. So good. Yes. Come forward. And then back up. So you're not just holding the strap. I hope you know this. Like you're giving it pressure. And that is giving you some feedback. Good. This time stay up and just take the arms back. Maybe bring the feet a little closer together. I'm going to take my hands really, really, really wide and come all the way around. So at no point should you feel like your shoulder could possibly pop out of the socket. Nice and easy. And then if you want, you can make it a little more challenging. But start with it easy. So we're just working that shoulder socket, like the arm in the socket. Beautiful. Take that, drop it, and you're going to take your hand. I'm actually going to go this way. So arm is going to be straight. Fingers are going to point back if it's okay. I have my right hand to the wall. Whatever hand you have to the wall, that foot's going to come forward. Squeeze the back glute. Open up your chest. Push your hand into the wall. Little rocks forward and back. It's like your hand is a suction cup on the wall. I've got my back heel down. I don't really feel much of a calf stretch, but you might. My ankles are very, very loose. But I am squeezing my left glute or my back glute, whatever that is for you, and getting a nice psoas stretch here. We're gonna take it and hold it for about 10 seconds. Lift the chest a little higher. Give pressure, all points. and then ease up, switching sides. Arm is straight. The arm that's at the wall, that is the foot that is forward. I've got my back heel rooted, almost like a warrior one stance. Squeeze this cheek, go forward and back. Give pressure to that hand that's at the wall. Yes, you're perfect. Good, Cassie. We're going to hold it and breathe. Lift your heart. Broaden across the chest. Good. Bring it back. Excellent. All right. We're going to do this at the floor, but it's going to be a little different. We're going to have our elbow bent so that we're not putting so much pressure on that joint. We're going to start in Sphinx. Get a nice little stretch here in your spine. We're going to lift and lower a few times. And it's not, um, you can actually push your hands straight down for what I'm hoping to accomplish here. Opening up the front of the body. One more. Good. Right arm is going to extend exactly how it is. You're just going to slide the arm out with the elbow bent. Look to the left, roll onto your right side. Consider putting your left foot on the ground. And then maybe that knee opens up to the sky. Your left hand can push down to give more pressure. Right hand is active, it's not passive. Push this right arm into the ground. Be kind, be kind. Engage your left cheek, that guy. Come back to center. Go right over to the left. Slide your left elbow straight out to the side. Look to the right. 
right foot can come on the ground behind right cheek is engaging lightly right hand can push down if you want a little more pressure you can also kind of lean off into that right hand if you want to take some of the pressure away left arm hand actively pressing into the ground Come back out. Come up onto hands and knees. And then stretch back. Good. Crawl your spine forward. Lift your feet up off the ground. Bring your chest to the ground. Your chin toward the ground. Hug the elbows in. Pull the chest open. And then slide through. And then come into cobra. And then press back. Have a seat. Have a seat. Good work. Okay, we are focusing upper body, but we gotta do a little bit of lower body here so that you get the benefits of that as well, the opening that we did there. It's gonna move this stuff so there's no peripherals there. Okay, feet are wider than your hips. You know I love this. 90-90. If you need your hands on the ground to support you, use them. Hi, mister. Beautiful. So when you come around, this glute engages to kind of bring the hip around. Get comfortable with this because we're going to add on to it. If you want, you can lean out over the leg. You can also lean out over the leg and use your hands if you're feeling a little unstable or if your brain is like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Hi, little. And then we're gonna add on to this. So come around, come as far forward as you feel comfortable. And then the back foot, you're gonna lift it up. Whoo! We're gonna try to hold it for a couple breaths and then bring it back around. To the other side, pick up the foot. Yes, yes. And then come up and around. Let's do that two more times each side. forgot to snooze my my in-house camera that I keep going into the frame of I just did and I was getting an alert every time I went over to that direction oh my goodness little and little's just chasing me back and forth here I think one more. I can't remember which direction we started in. It's not tragic if we do an extra one. Good. Come back through center. So good. So good. Take the legs out wide. And then just kind of rock with this. So sort of lift up, dig the heel in, go a little bit side to side to get your sitting bones really rooted down. Come back into center. Bend the knees a little bit. Dig the heels down. Lift up. Imagine that you could pull your heels to your sitting bones. Did I say too much? And then stretch the legs and then bring them in. Beautiful. Okay, so if you have one of these balls, you're gonna use one of these balls. Mine are not the same. I've somehow managed to like accumulate all these balls and put two different ones in. If you happen to have two of the same ones in a little bag like this, and I might be okay with these because they're pretty close in size, you can use your balls just like this. <laughs> it's so inappropriate, I know. But you can use your balls just like this in the little bag that it comes in if you have that. We're gonna bring it to the back of the head. You have to be really careful and make sure that this feels okay. If you don't have those little balls, you can use your yoga block on a little bit of an angle here, which is gonna be a little tricky to get it to stay, but you might have to hold it with your hands. So I'm gonna show you both. I'll start with a block, because I think most people have a block and fewer people have these little balls. Whoopsies, I have a block right here. Okay, you can also do this 
with your softball. Mm, mine's too big, it doesn't feel good. You could probably do it. Yes, you could with your roller. And if this angle of your neck didn't feel good, you could come here. And we're just gonna basically have something at the base of the skull to neck. The block is pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of prefer, oh my goodness, the roller or the little balls over the block. But if the block's all you have, don't put all your weight on it. I want you to be really careful not to aggravate anything. And you know what, I'm gonna use one ball. I like one ball better. And here's the thing to know about when we're doing this self myofascial work, which just basically is self massage, the smaller the surface, the more you pinpoint and the more intense it typically feels, typically. The bigger the surface, so if I was using like a golf ball, it would be like really intense. If I was using like a really soft softball size thing, then that would be less intense. I'm gonna do one side at a time, and I'm gonna kind of take about 30 seconds at a time. I'm gonna do it twice, and then I'm gonna hold it for a little bit longer. Right in the center when I finally hold it. Breathe, please. And you can move a little here. So all those muscles of the neck that go up and start to wrap the skull, look at the base of the head, get real tight. Well, on me. Be gentle here, please. I'm gonna say that one more time because you can actually aggravate things if you're a little too aggressive. I'm gonna kind of fall into the center, but I'm gonna use my hands behind my head to keep my head a little bit lifted so that it doesn't feel too intense. And that might just be because I've had a migraine today and it could be too much. This is usually what I need when my head hurts, so it's like to release some of these muscles at the back of my neck. Last few breaths here, so kind of find what you need. And then find your way to sitting. Good. Good, good. Drop your ear to your shoulder, doesn't matter which one. Take the opposite arm out to the side and then drop your chin toward your shoulder. And just kind of move up and down with the chin a couple times here. Come back up. Other side. Opposite arm out. Chin down and up a few times gently. Move slowly. Back up, breath in. Exhale. You're done. Good work, y'all. I hope you feel great. Mr. says he hopes you feel great. I wish you could see his little face. His little face is so cute, I'm gonna have to bring him up. Cause I know he's just all black and it's so hard to see his little face, but he's so cute. He's so cute. He just said, no mama, this is too much pressure. He's so cute. Mwah. 